Hey everybody, welcome back to Some Things Fishy. We're glad to have you here, and Sean and I are both getting very excited because we're starting to see some really cool traction on our YouTube channel. We have a couple real, like really awesome videos about clownfish and other products and, and reviews on certain things that you can have in your fish tank that are starting to really take off. So thanks for the support, thanks for joining us. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and you will get just direct access to all the videos that we are uh, that we are making and, and we're really excited to have you. So thank you very much. Let me know what you think below of our channel. Let me know, let me know what you think about anemones uh, below in the comments as well and be sure to like this video. Anyways, let's get right to it. So today we're going to be talking about anemones and what you need to know before you get one. Anemones, in my, this is my opinion, anemones and clownfish are honestly one of the, some of the coolest things that you can have in your saltwater fish tank. It's such a cool symbiotic relationship that, that you can have in your tank. And it's just really cool to watch how the, how they help each other out. Sometimes the clownfish will literally go and bring food directly to the anemone. And it, it's just really cool. They look insanely visually appealing. I really like both in my tanks. It's always a must for me. So I understand why you're looking this up because you need to know what you need to know before you get an, an, an anemone and maybe even a clownfish in your tank. Clownfish are super hardy fish. So you can get a clownfish pretty much right when you get your saltwater fish tank and you let the water cycle through and things like that. You can get those right away and they're hardy. They'll last a long time. They won't die easy. Anemones, on the other hand, they can be a bit touchy. So if your tank is new, if it's only been up for a couple months, you should not get an anemone yet. You're probably just going to waste a lot of money. Your tank's not going to be quite developed enough and it's just not going to work out. What we would recommend, recommend is that you wait six to eight months to maybe even, uh, you probably don't need to wait, wait quite a year, but maybe if you're, if you're patient and you can't, and you can wait, the longer you wait, the better, but six to eight months is probably, probably a good time frame before you put an anemone in your tank. Anything before that, and you're going to run a risk to have that anemone die and, and you know, that could be bad for your tank as well. So. Be careful there, just wait, be a little bit patient. Uh, Sean has had his tank for not quite a year, a little bit less. He's probably going on eight to nine months. So now's about the time that he's gonna be starting to uh, think about getting a getting in an enemy in there for his two clownfish that he has. So that's the first thing, just wait for your tank to be developed. If your tank is already super old, a uh, few years, you're totally fine to toss one in there, that's awesome. Another thing you need to know before getting an anemone is, and this isn't the biggest issue, but sometimes they can be a little bit damaging to corals. Uh, they move around and they can kind of get in the way. And it's funny because, you know, with a coral, you can literally just put it on a rock, maybe even get some underwater glue and it'll be there forever. It'll start to grow and expand and maybe spread over the rock, but you don't have to worry about it getting in the way and messing other things up. Anemones, they can move. And it's really weird to watch. <laughs> they can move and they can hook on to different parts of the glass and, and get to where they want to get. They'll go to where the lighting's best, where they think the food situation is best. So keep that in mind that you might have to rearrange some things in your tank because you don't want your anemones in, or your anemone encroaching on your corals and other things like that. It, it won't be very good for them. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to bring up in this video is anemones can be really expensive. And <laughs> so that's what you need to know before getting one. Because if, you, if you're on a certain budget for your tank, especially if you're new and you're not sure what to spend your money on, uh, man, an anemone can eat, in, eat into your budget really quickly. I was last week looking up a lot of details on anemones, bubble tips, rose bubble tips, and other ones just to see what the price comparisons were. And it, it depends because the price is going to fluctuate a lot depending on uh, you know, the market, do a lot of people have them? Is there an influx of anemones? Uh, I know for a long time, COVID-19 was really interrupting people being able to go and get saltwater fish in general. So I think the prices are a little bit higher right now than they normally would be, but I was seeing some anemones for well over $200, a lot in the one above the $100 range. And every once in a while, I was seeing some for less than a hundred dollars. Uh, one thing that I would, uh, one recommendation that I would give to you is look on Facebook Marketplace. You'll be able to find some things there. There might be some Facebook groups. I think that technically on Marketplace, you can't sell live animals. So there probably won't be, like you can, but you can't like have a price associated with them or something like that. So you might not see a price with it, but you'll just have to message the seller, see what 
they're selling their anemones for. My dad, for example, he's had this one bubble tip, rose bubble tip anemone for years, and it keeps splitting, and he always just gets on Facebook or Craigslist even is a good way, and sells them for a very decent price, a much better price than a lot of like the stores and chains and then things like that would sell for. So look on Facebook Marketplace, see if you got anything near you. Craigslist is great. And then as a last option, go just Google it and try and find a store that'll ship it to you. It's a little bit sketchy. I don't know, I, I always just get nervous not picking it up myself because you know, transport and things like that. You never know what's gonna happen. So make sure there's maybe like a refund policy if, if it does die or, or something like that. Just be careful. That's another, another thing that I would recommend to you. And uh, yeah, so let's, this kind of transitions into sometimes anemones aren't that easy to find, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, it depends on the market, depends on demand, depends on your area. So that's another thing. If you see a good deal and you think it's time, I would lock it in and get it before, uh, before it's too late. But one thing that I kind of mentioned already, this is a really good thing, is anemones can really start to pay for themselves. You know, if you've had, like my dad, an, an anemone that's grown to be really big and starts splitting, you can quickly start funding your saltwater fish tank habit. What my dad does is whenever his splits, his rose tip, rose bubble tip anemone, it splits, he'll sell it for maybe 50 bucks or 100 bucks or 80 bucks. And that goes directly into, into his uh, fish tank budget. And then over the next few weeks or month, he'll get new fish, get things like that with that budget. So that's one really cool thing with anemones and corals in general is that they will grow, they will split, and you can all of a sudden just start making money from your saltwater fish tank hobby and habits. So that's really cool about anemones. Another thing I would uh, tell you that you need to be careful with is not all clownfish host to all anemones. Uh, Sometimes they will. Sometimes you can get any clownfish to host any anemone, but there's some like genetics there that might not click as well. Uh, so you got to be a little bit careful because back, you know, before a lot of clownfish were uh, bred in captivity in the wild, you know, maybe a rose tip anemone was very common for, you know, this type, this species of clownfish, but, you know, a, a different, maybe a carpet anemone has nothing to do with another type of clownfish instinctively in the wild. So keep that in mind. There's some great resources out there that you can find on the internet. And maybe I've, I've even kind of made a video about that. Uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, about anemones and clownfish and pairing and things. So uh, just be careful to, to, uh, to know which clownfish are inherently going to host uh, which types of anemones. There's some tips. I made a video about helping how to help your clownfish host an anemone. So if you're kind of stuck and your clownfish has been a couple weeks or a few weeks or a few months and your clownfish still isn't hosting that anemone, use some of those tips in that video. They should help you out just fine. But anyways, that's, that's really the video I got for you. I just wanted, I think a lot of people getting into the hobby of saltwater fish tanks really like anemones, but it's a pretty, uh, I'm not gonna say it's like an expert level uh, thing for your saltwater fish tank, but it is a little bit more on the intermediate side. You don't wanna spend a lot of money on these expensive anemones and then just have them die because you didn't know really what you were doing or you don't want to just get ripped off by some person online that's selling them for super expensive. So I hope these tips in this video helped you. I hope that you're able to find the perfect anemone and the perfect anemone and the perfect clownfish for your fish tank and I hope that they're awesome. Let me know in the comments below what types of clownfish you have, what types of anemones you have, or what you're looking to get. I'd love to see what, what you've got in mind and we'll see you on the next video. Subscribe, like, comment. Thank you very much.